Hello and welcome to the chapter one workout problem uh, video. So today we're gonna go through the chapter one workout problems. There's three of them, so let's go ahead and get started. The very first problem is about Mr. Bell and Mrs. Smith. So they can both prepare tax returns and they can both paint houses. Okay, so let's go ahead and read through the scenario here. It says, Mr. Bell can prepare 10 tax returns in eight hours and he can paint a house in 12 hours. Mrs. Smith can prepare a tax return in two hours and she can paint a house in eight hours. So the first question is, is should Mr. Bell and Miss Smith specialize? So we know that uh, really what we're looking at here is, is there comparative advantage for Mr. Bell and Mrs. Smith if they produce only one of these two pr products, either a tax return or uh, a house painting, painting a house, right? And so we take a look here, and if we break down the numbers, we see that indeed Mr. Bell, this is his opportunity cost, okay, for, for, uh, doing tax returns, tax returns is on top, so this is his tax returns, okay, 15 to one house. Okay, so that's that's what his uh, set looks like, and Mrs. Smith, what she looks like is this, so she's able to do four tax returns, okay, for each house. Okay, and so what we will see is really what comparative advantage is, it's really just compared to other people or other producers, competitors. In this situation, both of them are laborers, right? They can either uh, work and do tax returns or they can work and do a house painting. And so we see here that in this case, uh, Mr. Bell has the comparative advantage in preparing tax returns and uh, Mrs. Smith has the comparative advantage when it comes to uh, doing houses, okay? And so the question is, is, should Mr. Bell and Mrs. Smith specialize? The answer is yes. And we're actually gonna see, uh, we're actually gonna prove this out here in the next couple uh, parts of the question. Okay, so then the next part is if they specialize, how many tax returns could be prepared and houses painted in 24 hours? Okay, and so we're assuming that uh, Mr. Bell is going to do uh, tax returns, right? So how many can he do in 24 hours, right? And so we, we, we know that he can do uh, 10 in eight hours, right? 10 every in eight hours, right? And so we know that uh, there's, uh, basically that that becomes then a multiple of three, right? So, because if we multiply eight hours by three, we end up with 24 hours and that's really where we want to head up or that's where we want to end up. So then we multiply three times the 10 tax returns and that gives us 30 tax returns right here in 24 hours. Now we're looking at Mrs. Smith. Okay, and we know that she is going to do houses. Okay, and we know that she can do one house in eight hours. Okay, and so we're gonna do basically the same thing with her, and so we're gonna go ahead and multiply that to get our 24 hours, right? So that's what we want here. This is our hours because we want to make sure that they match up. We're going to match them up with our uh, restraint that we're given, which is 24 hours. So we're going to multiply th the number of houses by three as well. And so she's able to do three houses right there in 24 hours. So this is actually our combination, three tax returns and then three houses. So that's our, our total output if specialization happens. Now the next question is, is if, and, and it gives us a bunch more data, but basically we're gonna build on what we've already done, okay? And so we're gonna look at the before, 
before specialization and after. Oh, after, there we go. And so we, we've already computed the after, right? And so we know that we're gonna have 30 tax returns and three houses painted. Okay, so we know that that's gonna be our after if they specialize, right? So this is specialization. All right, and so now before, this is that's what we have to compute and we have to come to a dollar amount for each one of these so that we can actually say, okay, what was the gain to the economy? Not in terms of uh, tax returns or houses, but actually in terms of real dollars. And so let's, and, and we're assuming here, this is where our assumption is, we're assuming they're doing one house in a day and everything else is spent doing tax returns. Uh, so this is what Bell's gonna look like, Mr. Bell. So he's gonna do uh, his one house, right? One house. And that's gonna take him, that's gonna take him 12 hours, okay? Out of, the, out of the day, and he's gonna have an, another remaining 12 hours, right? And the question is, is how many tax returns then can he do? So we know that he can do 10 in eight hours, so it's gonna be one and a half times the 10, so that's gonna be 15. So he's gonna have 15 tax returns. And then Smith here, this is before specialization. She's also going to do one house, because that's what our scenario was up here. So she's got one house that she's gonna do, and that's gonna take her eight hours. Okay, and then uh, for the remaining uh, 16 hours, she is gonna do uh, tax returns. Okay, so how many, how many is she able to do in 16 hours? <clears throat> she can do one every two hours. So that means that she's gonna be able to do eight tax returns, right? <clears throat> so we go ahead and multiply these out. Uh, each house is $500, okay? And each tax return is $80, okay? And so uh, that will give us, for Mr. Bell, that actually is uh, $1,700 total. $1,700, okay? Because it's 500 times one, 80 times 15, and add the add that up. So this is times 15 right here, right? And we're adding these up. Okay, that's how that's how it's done. Okay, for Smith as well, so we know it's, we know she's got $500 here for this house, and then she's got uh, $80 per tax return times eight, and then we're gonna add these up and that gives her $1,140. And so that's what they're able to produce uh, dollar-wise before specialization. And we're, and then we go ahead and add both of these up and that gives us 2,840. Okay, so this is before specialization. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna specialize and this is, this is relatively easy, right? So we know Mr. Bell is gonna do tax returns times $80, okay? And that is $2,400 for Mr. Bell just on tax returns. So how is he doing? That, this was his amount before, 1,700. Compare that to 2,400, he's doing better, right? And so then Mrs. Smith as well is gonna just specialize in houses and that's gonna be times $500 per house, and that'll be $1,500. So how's she doing if she specializes? So this was her amount before, 1,140. We compare that to our 1,500, and she's doing better as well. We add those up, and then that's $3,900. The economy is doing better by an amount of, so if we, if we go ahead and subtract this, 
2,840. Subtract that amount. That'll give us the difference, which is 1,060. And that right there is our answer uh, to tell us. Went ahead too quick. So that right there is our answer, and that's how much the economy um, will gain by specialization, $1,060. So let's move on to uh, problem number two. So it says Angelica can work as many hours as she wants in her family's restaurant for $10 per hour. So she can work as much as she wants for $10 per hour. She is a busy college student though, right? So, and she has a full schedule of classes so she only has 19 hours to work in a week. Other potential jobs she could work are, so she has three more jobs that she could work. One is a cleaning job at a local hospital for $11 an hour, but she can only do that for eight hours a week. Uh, one's a daycare job that pays $12 for hour, per hour, but she only has six hours uh, per, per week that she can work that job. Um, and then the very last one is a work study job that pays $9.75 an hour and she can work all 19 hours uh, doing that job. So the question is, is if her goal is to maximize the amount of money she can earn in a week, which jobs will she work and for how long? So what do, so what do, you, what do you think she'll do? Which jobs is she going to work? Assuming that she can work multiple jobs, right? She's not, she doesn't only have to, have to do one, she can do multiple. So this is the layout, right? So of course, she's gonna do the $12 an hour job first, but she only has six hours to do that with, and so that decreases her 19 hours by six, right? So she's got 13 hours remaining. She earned $72 from that job, daycare. Cleaning job now, that's the next one down the line, right? So $11 per hour. She's going to do that one next for eight hours. She's able to do that one for uh, for for eight hours, that which reduces her, the rem hours remaining in the week to work to five hours. Okay, and so she's she's only has five hours left. So which job is she going to do now? Is she going to work at the family restaurant for for ten dollars an hour, or do the work study job? Of course, she's going to do the grab the $10 an hour job um, instead of the uh, $9.75, 25 cent different, right? So she's gonna do the, the family restaurant, assuming there's no other um, incentives involved, right? We're just going off the dollar per hour amount. And so she'll do that for the remaining five hours, uh, which leaves her no more hours to work, the work study job and her, uh, the amount earned, right, is this total right here. So that's how she's gonna spread them out. That's how, she, how much she's gonna make per job. And um, and that's really just uh, allocating her time, right, which is money, and she works. Problem number three, New York, New York City is banning sugary fountain drinks that are larger than 16 ounces. So here are the prices related to the sugary fountain drinks before and after the ban. So here's the before is here, right? This is how much they cost for the uh, for the amount. These are, these are the sizes over here on this side. Let me change my, right? We got our sizes, uh, amounts. And now after the ban, we have new sizes. So it's a whole new set. And then the uh, amount that's going to be charged, that actually is supposed to be 0 0.89, 89 cents, okay, for the six ouncer. So the question is, is what effect on price did the ban have for our consumers? And then on the flip side, what is the effect on profitability for the suppliers of sugary fountain drinks? So let's take a look into this. And so in order to do this, basically I'm, I'm building a table right down here that gives us the cost per ounce, right? So, so what is the effect on price uh, for to consumers? Okay, so we see here that the consumers are paying more per ounce, right? This is the before, ten cents for the smaller, all the way to six cents for the larger drink, 
and then we see here that uh, we're actually even for like right so this is the 12 ounce or again this is 11 cents to 10 cents and so it's shifting and and then we're we're uh, have the cost more per ounce for the consumer so the consumer really is um, not necessarily coming out good on this one okay so so now the next question is is the what is the effect on profitability for the suppliers of sugary drinks well uh, we, we, we would really need more information but this is the this is the bottom line right so this is really the point that we need to think about and this is the answer right to the question so uh, for B is that we need to remember the economies that economies of scale allow suppliers to maintain profit margins at lower price points okay so if there is a producer here right the cost per ounce to the consumer is only six cents okay this is not necessarily the cost to produce right this is just the 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 actual price that uh, the end that the end consumer is buying the drink for okay so but what we're what we're assuming is is this also reflects the the cost to produce so how can the producer or the supplier still maintain a profit margin so the profit margin is basically the the revenue gain right so the revenue minus the expenses right okay so this this here is our is is our profit margin we can say say that right okay so so obviously after the ban on these large sugar drinks so all these right here are banned right so these right there are banned after the ban on these drinks then we see that the cost per ounce for the consumer goes up uh, why how does this affect suppliers it affects the suppliers because they're not able to ramp up production and produce in larger batches okay okay so they're the actual quantity the actual ounces that they're producing are lower therefore their expense per ounce because of the economies of scale is gonna be higher so they need to charge a higher price Okay, so this is this this uh, higher cost per ounce does not necessarily mean higher profit margins for the suppliers or the producers of the sugary fountain drinks. That's the connection I want to I want you to make on this answer as you answer it. You may not necessarily know the actual cost. Well, I didn't put anything in here with the scenario, but this one's just a an application, a critical thinking type question that says, okay. How is this going to affect the suppliers? And really, it needs to include the uh, economies of scale for the suppliers in this answer. So anyways, hope that helps you. And we will uh, talk to you later. Have a good day.